Fear. Fear is a very interesting emotion. It can motivate or it can paralyze. It can be productive or it could be destructive. Depending on who you fear, why you fear, and what you fear. That fear is either praised in the Quran or it is looked down upon when it becomes paralyzing and destructive and leads you to nowhere but despair. And unless you have that hope to balance you out, there is no way that that fear could possibly be productive because the default of fear is that it is a paralyzing emotion. It needs hope in order for it to be productive. I want you to picture the scene in Medina and this hadith sends shivers down my spine because I always think about it when I think about the quality of fearlessness that we take from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu as he usually did when he would reflect on the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described a beautiful quality of the Prophet peace be upon him and then a manifestation of that beautiful quality. So he says, كَانَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَحْسَنَ النَّاسِ The Prophet ﷺ was the best of people. And in this context, he was also speaking about the way that he was externally. He was the most perfect of people. وَأَجْوَدَ النَّاسِ And the most generous of people. وَأَشْجَعَ النَّاسِ And the most courageous of people. And he recalled this incident that took place where there was some noise outside in the middle of the night in Medina. And the people thought that they were under attack. So when Medina is under attack, where do you think the Prophet ﷺ should go? What do you think the protocol should be? Shouldn't everyone surround the house of the Prophet ﷺ and make sure that he's protected? Medina is supposedly under attack and he said, and we came out and we see the Prophet ﷺ riding on his horse, unstrapped to it. So the Prophet ﷺ is not is, is completely unrestrained on this horse and he has his sword in his hand and the Prophet ﷺ is riding around to make sure that whatever came would be deterred and the Prophet ﷺ says to the companion, says to the people of Medina, Lam tura'u, lam tura'u, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Ali radiallahu anhu says that when the battle would become toughest, when it would become hottest, and when we would be utterly exhausted, the people would hide behind the Prophet, peace be upon him, in battle. He was the nearest to the enemy. Al-Bara said that the bravest of us would only be standing next to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was it about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that gave him such courage and such composure in the face of things that would usually cause people absolute fear. And fear is a more comprehensive emotion in the Quran. There are different things that you fear. Some people fear death. And you sound radical when you tell people not to fear death until you can throw in a Socrates quote which exists or a, a quote from Plato or a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King who said that if you haven't found something worth dying for, then you're not really alive. But when the Prophet ﷺ says that the nations will gather against you and feast on you at a table, and fear, al-wahn, will be placed in your heart. And the companion said, what is al-wahn? The Prophet ﷺ said, حُبَّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةَ الْمَوْتِ To love the world too much and to hate death too much. That doesn't make us a death cult. You can find similar sayings in context to the same effect that if you haven't found something that gives you absolute resolve in the face of things that should, should make you scared, then you need to reconsider what it is that you're living for in the first place. What was it about the Prophet ﷺ that he didn't fear the snares of the people and the stares of the people and the smears of the people. Allah describes that as a legitimate fear in the Quran, the fear of being outcast. They're not afraid of the blame of the blamers. We're not worried about being outcasts. 
What was it about the Prophet wasallam that when a man grabs his sword and stands on top of him and says, Ya Muhammad, man yamna'uka minni, O Muhammad wasallam, who will stop me from killing you? That the Prophet wasallam, with full composure and tranquility can say, Allah. Without stuttering, without shaking, Allah. There was something about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it was that complete trust in Allah, that nothing was worth fearing but Allah, that no consequence that would be faced for his sake is to, is to be feared either. What's the worst that they could do to you? What's the worst that they could do to you when you're living for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If they kill you, it's shahada, it's martyrdom. Whatever they do to you, if they slander you, then Allah will glorify you and raise you. What's the worst that they could do to you? That's that fearlessness that was in the voice, the unquivering voice of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah when he said, what can my enemies do to me? My garden is in my heart. Jannah is in my heart. You can't take it away. They kill me, it's martyrdom. They deport me, then it's a chance to reflect on the signs of Allah. And if they leave me in isolation, then it's a chance to be in seclusion with Allah. There is no fear because there is nothing worth fearing except for Him. And there is no consequence worth fearing if it is faced because of your determination to do what He commands you to do, subhanahu wa ta'ala.